Welcome to the Jen and Marty Show. Still music. Um, we are here to have a community conversation with you, so we would love it if you would call us or email us. I'm Margie Wigan. And I'm Jen Delisi. And we have a guest with us, Brendan Headstone, who we'll talk about in a minute. Um, we just want to make sure that you know it's a community conversation. We'd love to have you call in 508-435-7880 or email us live at hcam.tv. Or you can even tweet at hashtag Jen and Margie. Not to be confused with any Instagram, no video, no, no photo posts for yeah, no. Jen and Margie. That is not yeah. us, just no. so you know. Right. Exactly. I just want to give a little shout out to my neighbor, Michaela, who gave me a henna tattoo over the weekend. And I just want to say thank you, Michaela. That's cute. Very cute. Very cute. So we had the 4th of July yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone looks like they... Had a pretty easy Fourth of July. Nobody's yeah. I've got the stars and stripes on. I love your patriotic still. garb. I love it. Yeah, very sweet. Got it. What'd you do yesterday? Represent. I went to the Horrible's Parade in Hopkinton, which we're going to talk about. Yep, yeah, the cookout and fireworks the night before at Milford uh, Lowe's. I watched from Lowe's. Oh, nice. Yeah, they're, they're great. Very nice. I was trying to watch the. Um, I don't know if you saw the the ones in Boston. I watched the DC ones on the TV at eight o'clock, but I couldn't find the ones in Boston. I guess they went on later. I thought the pops? 10 30, 10 o'clock. I don't know. It was I later. think that they switched channels because now they're not right. being produced by you confused GBA, me. Right? I was I looking. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they went on a different channel and they, they were saying that it was going to be a better way for them to produce them. Now they have a little more artistic well, freedom with it. So if, that was nice. If we can't find it, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I agree. My, uh, I agree. My wife and kids went to the fireworks in Bar Harbor nice. oh, yesterday. Nice. And uh, it was the first time that she had been there. My wife Ooh. and kids had been there, and they said, they said it was, they were unbelievable. In the harbor, I would yeah. imagine. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. That's got to be nice. We did have some, some fireworks from a, from a neighbor who had acquired them somehow. Somehow. Uh, somehow. Yeah. You know, we had Chief Leon last week, so he yeah. was talking about fireworks and saying, you know, people forget yes. that they're still illegal yeah. here. Right. We're not looking to really, you know, close down fireworks in a neighborhood, he said, but people are, you know, forget that they're illegal. Um, and it was great. It was maybe we had 10 minutes of things and they were very well planned and it was nice and safe and, and nobody got hurt, which is always good, but it was That's nice to just thing. have that in front of your house. You know, even yeah. sparklers. Do you guys remember sparklers, sparklers when you were a kid? Absolutely. So I remember I love the sparklers. these really long yeah. aluminum, like yeah. you burn your hands at the tips. Yeah. Now they're very different. They they're yeah. almost look like um, wood sticks and little at the end and they don't burn as bright or as probably not as dangerous either but yeah you can still get the old school ones you can you, yeah. can you really like, yeah if you go to a state Brandon not in Massachusetts you up after the show. I would never bring them into Massachusetts we of would place them in Maine as selectmen yeah. you so, would never do no. that so no, we no, no. would only burn them uh, within those state lines got it God, so I like that. That. and we all I'm, I'm sure from, we always had safety glasses and gloves too of course <laughs> well safety I did no hear season. about a poor woman who was lit up a M100 or something. M80? Lost. It was no, a it was 100. 100. Oh, yeah. And yeah, she I lost some fingers. It was really Crazy. awful. Well, she probably won't do that again. No, well, she, she can't. That's how you learn. Some anyway. people need different ways of learning. Gross. She's now, hopefully she's not a tactile learner. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. Maybe she's not she's kinesthetic anymore. No, or auditory. Not. Yep. Mm, yep. Perhaps. So another thing that went on yesterday that was uh, also not... Um, to appealing was Joey Chestnut once again won the hot dog contest yeah. by Where eating contest? 72 hot dogs. I think it was in Coney Island. Yeah, it's up there. And he won he, buns and everything, or just yeah, hot dogs. Uh, yes, he wets them first because apparently that helps it go down faster. Yeah. And um, Mika Sudo also had her fourth win um, eating 41 hot dogs. In 10 minutes. Is That's it 10 minutes they call, or 10 seconds? No, I think it's 10 minutes. 10 That's minutes. the one that they call the Black Widow or something like that, right? I don't, I, don't I don't know about you. If I eat one and a half hot dogs, I start to feel not great. But I love hot dogs. And the bun. Like, it's even the bun. two, two, I'm like no. over the top. I would I say don't. our ratios are probably a little different, but I know but, what you're saying. But you know, like it's not 50. It's <laughs> no, not, it's not, maybe it's five, but it's not, yeah. Yeah. it's not that many. No. Yeah. I mean, there's got to be some kind of digestive disorder that I think happens so. after that. Yeah, or he gets so. rid of them very a fast. A cute digestive yeah. disorder. So, um, and then back to the Horribles Parade, I, I wrote down some of the uh, trucks that went by. A lot of trucks there to honor Tommy McIntyre. So, yeah, so there were the fire trucks, obviously, Scott Septic had the all tricked out in the flags. Um, Tommy, Tommy Jr., and was it Kelly? Yeah. Kelly. Yeah. McIntyre? Yeah, I don't think Kelly was in the parade, though. 
There was a, not this time. Yeah, his okay. wife, Tommy's. That's Tom, who Tommy, it was. It was Tommy's. So wife. Uh, yeah, so I still call him Little Tommy, but yeah. he goes by Bo or or Tommy. So he just got married a couple of weeks ago, and uh, so he and his wife were in now there. Now, she looks familiar Marshall. to me. Is she from Hopkinton? Uh, no, she's not. Okay. Hopefully she will be So <laughs> I'd like to see them move Aww. into town. They're, well, they're living in Boston right now. Well, my house is up for sale. It's good to know. Um, so they were in this lead, the lead truck was this old-fashioned fire truck. It was so cute. Is that the one that they use every year? I feel like so they it do. must be. That's the old, um, it's a 1941 Ford, uh -huh. and it's a truck that Tommy got that used to be Hopkinton's, Aww. that his dad used to oh, run when he great. was a lieutenant on the fire department. And Very it was nice. parked in the back of the Woodville station, so he pulled it out and had some of his guys just going through and professionally restored. The thing is great. amazing. Yeah, Where do they it's keep pretty, it? Uh, it's at his garage on is Elm it? Street. I mean, okay. on uh, Lumber Street. Okay. He's mm. got that, and then the 19. Actually, I think it's a 54, the old Hopkins and Diamond T, which he hasn't restored. He just got and mm -hmm. keeps running. That's awesome. But that's the one that I drive sometimes in parades. Really? And yeah, it doesn't have a roof on it. Oh, so, that's great. But it's not a convertible. It's, well, it is by it default is, now. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. never had a roof. Okay. It, it was built that way. It never had a roof. That's so funny. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's great. Probably they didn't use that in the winter, I'm imagining. Yeah, they sure did. They did. They yeah, had to. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, All they right. did. So you grew up in town. I did. Yeah. How many How many years have you been here? In this town? Well, I'm 47, <laughs> so I, I was here, here 47 years. <laughs> yeah. And how many generations? Uh, so I know definitely of six. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if my kids make seven but I know definitely of six. I know that my mom was a uh, Terry, mm -hmm. so uh, that cultural arts building, that's where she and my uncles and, mm -hmm. and my aunt grew up. And then uh, they had a dairy farm there and the oil company, and so yeah, it just goes generations. Is Terry Oil still around? It is, but uh, it's, it was sold and it's called uh, the Alliance, Alliance or something like okay. that. Okay, yeah. got it. Express. I remember I when Alliance I first Express. moved to Hopkinton, we had Terry Oil. Yeah. I did too, so did 18, yep. 17 years. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And then my grandmother was a pine. Okay. So oh, yeah, P Y N E. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're kidding. Yeah. So that pine, sand, and stone. And yes. That's all her family. My family too. So my kids have gone to school. Some of the pine, great, great. Yes. Yep. 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 Heather Heather Pine is my daughter's age. Yeah. Oh, that's and so her daughter was in one of my my yeah. classes. Yeah. Sh uh, Shaylin. Shay. Yeah. Shay. So yeah. Terry Pine. Yeah. Tedstone. And my, Tedstone. My, the Tedstone part of we were. Mm. They were Wellesley and Ashley, and they were that's okay. Nomads. They <laughs> they went wherever the rent was cheapest. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. But there's that's a Ted. I believe there's a Ted Stone um, engraved in the library. Is that right? Or am I thinking of something else? There might be. Yeah, oh, probably. Know. Maybe from my mother. I don't know. My mother's a big supporter of the library. Probably. Uh, so there also know. were um, trucks under pressure <laughs> represented, yep. Yep. and there were semis. The Under from Pressure is, called, a, is a company from Framingham, but... Mark Mercer is Yeah, he's here. from Hopkins. Yeah, yeah. And he, he lives he's, in the center of town. He's a great guy. He is a great guy. Yeah. Is he the gentleman that helped with the um, the cleaning of the headstones? Yes, yep. he showed up to clean headstones. Very yeah. nice. And uh, his son is uh, in the preschool at um, Elmwood. So, or mm -hmm. he was, yeah. So I see him every... He was so cute. Um, anyway, so the semis we had Food Liner, which I wasn't sure where that was. J. O'Donnell, Kimball, um, George Sumner's, High Acres. Summers. Um, Summers, High Summers, Acres. Yeah, high so acres. I assume they're all connected to Tommy in some way? Yeah, well, um, so Kimball's, funny enough, Kimball's and, and McIntyre and Pine were kind of competitors. Oh. So they all sold the same product, but geographically, Pine kind of focused more on sand and stone, whereas McIntyre. Uh, hey, we work. have a visitor here. Unbelievable. We have a visitor here. Glad to see you got Hi. dressed up for tonight. <laughs> How are you? So, so come stand right behind him, right here. <laughs> and uh, so this is the, the man on live TV right now, Dan. Great. So this is Dan McIntyre, Tommy McIntyre's brother, Margie Wigan. Hey, Margie. Nice to, Jen. Nice to see you. Yeah. How are you? Good. And Good. Dan was I'm Brendan. handing I'm Brendan. out. <laughs> Dan was handing out the trophies. That's my other brother. I love it. <laughs> handing out the trophies at the end of the day. My mother liked you best. <laughs> <laughs> Doing that. <laughs> um, and so actually I'm glad you're here because we we're gonna talk about some of the awards for the best this and that. Do you yeah. remember what you handed out? Sure. Because I wrote it down if you don't. <laughs> Let me use your notes. Sure, I know if you can read it. So uh, how, how, how long have you guys known each other though? Here, you sit mm -hmm. here. I'm just gonna stay. I'm yeah, short. No, no, I'm shorter, so you stay. Dan's, sure Dan's significantly okay, no, older than me. They have the so Dan, you're significantly older, older than, than Brendan. Yeah. Look at him. <laughs> I still have some hair, though. You should see my back. There's an inverse <laughs> relationship between the, the age and the hair. Okay. Yep, so we've known each other for a long, long time. 
And you grew up in Hopkinton too, right? Yes. So, yep. Okay. And you have a brother. I'll tell you. I know you. that. Tell, but you have another brother. Do you have another? Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I'm sorry, you. but yeah. you have another brother. Yeah, Charlie, my older brother. Charlie has come before the Board of Health as well, too, correct? Is that your brother? No? Uh, no, he, no, he lives okay. out in Indianapolis. Okay, no, that's not him. Then. I'm no. confusing him with somebody else. Okay, yep. so I'm sorry again. That's but we had a great parade this year, didn't Absolutely. we? Yeah, we did. We sure did. Yeah. So I was just talking about the semis that I saw, and um, there was one, the, some of the rides that I loved. Um, there was one with uh, the Hopkinton School Choice ride, the Keep Tech ride. I yep. know you went yeah, to Keep Tech. I did. did. you go to Keep Tech or you went to Hopkinton? No, I went to a ride. <laughs> no, I, I went to Hopkinton. <laughs> he did not just about say that. There's he did. No he way. wasn't going to say that. There's no way Keep Tech was even thought of when Dan was going to school. <laughs> So what I loved about that ride was Brenna Creswell was on the ride with her mom and the, and sister and the and her sister's baby, but they were sitting in Adirondack chairs that Brenna Creswell had actually made. Oh, nice! She did. So yeah. I was. Like, so yes. I know Brenna's dad. Yes, of who's course. been around for a long time too. He's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. and mom. Of yeah, course. I think we gave them the, was the family award or something. You we, did. Yeah. Um, they yeah. Uh, no, they didn't. Mm, they got some they some they got did. Some I wrote it down. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, the Children's Award went to the Mayhew Street truck yep. seven or one or something. Um, let's see. Well, lots of awards. I'm gonna go yep. through the yep. awards. Yep. So the board, so the Music Award went to Boo Clark. Yeah, the Clark Brothers were singing. They played. Oh, they were singing. I think they. I think I they were. I thought they were playing music. And then they we had um, they had Denise and Joe. Antaki, Antaki had those big Yeah, can you believe they made those faces. big heads and they walked that whole room? And in the back, there was a sign that, that attached to the back said, how long before we can be townies? Oh, you know, cute. it was, that's it was really cute. very creative. But they, they, had, they said they had children in town here. They do have children so in they're, town. So they're like anchor parents. Absolutely. So they can be townies I like now. That. Well, <laughs> like they, honorary they, townies. They'll yes. have to apply. I think 20 but years gave, makes you townies. we gave them, what, the family? Or they got the, yeah, I don't know. So, we had um, a crazy award, musical, we would have given it to them. I know, right? It was kind of crazy. That, but most, they did a great job. Most patriotic award was <laughs> were, was because the flags were on the Scott Septic, yep. um, Board of Selectmen and Carolyn, and then Family Award was Denise and Joe, Children's Award was Mayhew Street, and Whisper Way was the Bears. Yeah, that was cute. Oh, huh? That was adorable. <laughs> yeah. there, there are bears in Whisper Way, black bears. They I are. did not oh, know yes. that. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, then, those people in Whisper Way, they're good. They're good people. It was a great flow yeah. too. And then the historic award went to Pine Sand and Stone. <laughs> I missed something. Yeah, I guess you did. I did. Brendan got it. Yeah, I got it. He did. He did. So yeah, then, do you Pine live Pine on Whisper Way? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Do you know? I just want to say I'm it. very book smart. I'm very book smart, but sometimes it just goes. I didn't know where he lived either. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, now we know. That's a that, that, that bear was now. ten feet tall. If it was an inch. Yeah. <laughs> It was a cute little one to walk by the bird feeder. <laughs> then the historic okay. <laughs> it was a big squirrel. So yeah. then um, third told us something. J C Parmenter. Yeah, J C uh, Parmenter. Keep Tech, tech alum were the third. They got third place. Yep. And then um, Norton and uh, Haynes. Norton, Norton and Haynes. Haynes. They came. And then the Elm Street. Elm Street. Yep. We gave yep. them the selectmen award. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they 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 were kind of went with the tradition of the Harvest Parade, which yeah. was kind of satirical of public. They did no really no guests. Like yeah. I think I was on that float. <laughs> you were you, <laughs> you were on that float. You were. How many selectmen attended that? The horribles. Program? This year, uh, I don't know of any that attended One. as a selectman. I attended as. Not a selectman. As a, as a citizen. As a, a citizen, guy in town. As someone Joe, who grew up in town that loves Joe the Horrible Parade. Yeah. The year before, I was a selectman. I was on that float. And right. I have to say, um, so one of the things, so I was standing there when, when you went up and you were standing together and you were talking about Tommy. Mm -hmm. and so my daughter was on um, Tommy's baseball team, softball team, um, and she had broken her arm and leg rollerblading down a hill in a cul-de-sac and she went to stop and it was like February vacation. She twisted the leg so she had a spiral fracture. Ugh. But he, because we had already signed up to be on the team, yeah. he said, of course she should come. So she sat on the bench. Yeah. She felt like a part of the team. Yeah. And he did that. You know, he was so warm and, and welcoming and encouraging yeah. that it didn't feel weird to her. He you had know? practice 
having, a, <laughs> having Dan around to have someone sit on the bench and be nice to someone that couldn't yeah. play that well. <laughs> yeah, he was always good like that to me. <laughs> sit on the bench. So, those of you watching at home, if you have anything you'd like to say to these brothers of other mothers here, yeah. um, please call in 508-435-7880 or email us live at hcam.tv. Um, feel free to her ask questions of these young men here. Um, so what you said to me, a couple things, not to me, but what, the things you said that struck home with, to me about Tommy were one, he's looking down on us and, mm -hmm. the, and the parade is really for him. Mm -hmm. The other thing I wrote down was you said that people, you, you were thanking the semis and the trucks coming from, yep. for coming and you said it's nice that they would come to this little redneck parade for Tommy yep. and then you said that he is someone who gave more to the town than anyone mm -hmm. and and that um, Tommy was always for Hopkinton he wants us to be at the parade not just for him but for Hopkinton right. going forward yep. you know and then you, were, you said yep. everyone should be there again yep. to keep it going because Tommy would want us to do that yep. so that yep. was and really that's the very truth. moving that was, that was nice yeah Tommy was very a moving. Tommy was the as far as Hopkinton goes I mean as far as I know I don't know anyone that did more for the town of Hopkins. Like Dick Egan yeah. has probably given more out of his pocket than Tommy did, well, that's perhaps, but maybe not. Yeah. We know we don't know half the stuff that Tommy did. True. That's the thing. Tommy just did things, and you don't you don't know that he did them. Yeah. Right. It just Big heart. And he didn't want anyone to know that he did them. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that you and I had a, something to do with putting that planter in the center of town. Yeah, we helped with that. Yeah. And um, I remember he called me one Sunday morning and said, meet me up at the common. CVS corner? Or, yeah. yeah. Well, we call it Colella's corner. I know. I was going to say yeah. Colella's. Yeah. I yeah. always Colella think of it as Colella's. Yeah. Their grandfather. Yeah. Colella's so he said, corner. I agree. He said, meet me up at the common some Sunday morning. So I go <laughs> up there and he's got his big excavator up there and he's getting ready to tear down the gazebo. And he says, you sure you got permission to do that? Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I With, a big, smile. Yep. With a big smile. But then Tim Cullough came along and he said, yeah, yeah, we can, we're going to tear it down. And Yep. But he saved all the grant uh, part of the foundation. He made the fire station uh, sign out of that. Nice. That I didn't know that. Awesome. That's nice. Tommy had some very obscure <laughs> ideas and obscure ways to do them, but they always came out perfect. Really? Yeah. So I knew, I mean, I've known Tommy for a long, long time. And I worked, when I first started working out of high school, in the summers I'd work for Tommy. And nice. his dad was running, so his dad had retired from the town, mm -hmm. and his dad would run the dozer. So we called his dad Perini, and the reason we called him Perini is because no matter what the job was, his father would make it a huge job. Like Perini Construction, yeah. reference like, to Perini, okay. Like Tommy would say, just go back, drag 50 feet of that. Well, he'd have to slope, you know, 500 <laughs> feet off, and, and uh, so we called him Perini. He had very obscure ways to do things, but it always came out perfectly, and uh, you yeah. can see where Tommy got it from. Uh, yeah, that's so funny. Yeah. Good training. Yep, Good training. Tommy was the best. There's no... I will go down fighting for anyone that will disagree with me on that one. Okay. I don't think you're going to have no, much I hope or not. any I don't disagreement think so. on that. That's an easy, that's, so. an, uh, that's a layup. So tell us about previous horrible spreads, if you guys can remember. The best one you can remember, the best float you remember, what made it really feel like 4th of July for you? Well, I remember one, and Dan has been to a lot more of these than me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up again. <laughs> um, but Poor I remember Dan. so to Tommy was dressed up as a ninja turtle when they were trying to do the um the oh, high yes, school. Yes, yes. Yeah. And they said they found the spotted turtles. turtles. So, right. So Tommy Was it down at um, Pine? I think when they were trying to build it. Was the, uh, the golf course. Yeah, that's right. The Jack yeah. Nicholas golf yeah. course. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember turtles. sorry. They yeah. had a space up in seventy seven Maine where they had their office where Stephanie G. Jewelers is right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And they, you would go in and they would have like the scale, oh, yeah. the rendering of yeah. it over yeah. there. Yeah. So I forget yeah. the sanctuary golf course or yeah, something, something like, like that. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. That's right? right. Yeah. Yes. So, so yeah. there was nothing off the limits. That. Tommy would do anything to anybody. He could care less because he was that guy. He just couldn't get mad at him. He could no. go up and kick you He'd right smile. in the shin and all you do is laugh. Because right. the way he delivered it, it was something about the guy. No matter what he did, you didn't. You never could get mad at him. It was ever. a smile. You must have been smiling. And you knew he meant well. It's always <laughs> yep. he always had the best intention. He wouldn't kick you. No. No, he no. wouldn't kick you. <laughs> so how many uh, years has the Horribles Parade been around? It's been going around since the '30s. My grandfather started it back then. Cool. But it's a, it's a, like it's it's a New England tradition. There's a few towns that do it. I hadn't but heard I think, of it until I, I moved Hopkins up here. Kind of the remaining one. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And is the intent, so I thought when I, because I moved here 19 years ago, well, I was here before and then I came back 19, 20 years ago, 19. So I remember it being the float that would kind of make fun of the selectmen. Mm -hmm. right. And another float would make fun of sort of government yeah. things. But I didn't see that this year. Um, do, well, do, are Street. we changing we tried, it? We tried to do that with yeah. Elm Street. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're in a little more politically correct world now. And it's, it's harder yeah. for people to actually get You know, I, 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 as much as I believe that, sometimes I turn on the news and I don't believe that. I, I believe know. it's an awful politically incorrect world now. Yeah. Well, I think people, bad are afraid to, and, people are afraid to create oh conflict, is what you yeah. mean. Yeah. So like this year, we, Some we, blame, we, blame, <laughs> <laughs> we blame the town hall water issues on Norman not shutting off the water after he went to the bathroom to wash his hands. I did not hear that. <laughs> you didn't hear that? No. I, I think it's true. It's true. Well, it must be. If you said it, it yep. has to be true. Yep. It's a and now, all the, now everyone knows. Yep. Yeah. Where Tommy would get away with things, I'd always get yeah. in trouble. You're going to get a little phone call tomorrow morning. Yeah. I know, I know. Yes. Most of, the, most of the great floats that I did with all these nice satirical signs, they're, they're part of out-of-court settlements. And I had a gang on them. Yeah. Yeah. Mary, so Mary Pratt is still not so Mary Pratt. Pratt. I guess you learn over time. <laughs> I was going to say Mary Pratt. You learn over time. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. Or Ken Wisemantle, 45 ash. <laughs> Yeah, okay, right, okay. Write, yeah. These, yeah. write these addresses down. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we, we had the kazoo band one year. Yeah, I remember hearing that. I was part that. of that. It was 100 strong. In that that was great. Oh, I, why did I not bring a kazoo? We could have had a little sample yeah. of that well, right now. No, no, you could not have had a sample of that because I was in a different state at that point. <laughs> but that was when they tore the tap down. Oh, and, uh, oh yeah. Which most people don't even know what the tap. So is. I was it's not the bar around for the, to the tap. Left yeah. of Yoga it's the one Beach. that's yeah. It's the one that you know that restaurant they've created to the, rent out that they the can't rent box. out. Correct. It's just sitting there, but yeah. it used to be a bar room, it was and that's what it was. It was a bar we should we should buy it and call the tap too. <laughs> you put the money up, I'll run it. It's a gold mine. Oh, you heard, you heard you shake on it, my friend. I will hand you my nursing license and get I, tip certified. <laughs> I am tip certified right. right now until right. November. We could do this. All right. Okay, my we wife, could do it. My wife's a chef, too, so, oh. but we wouldn't this serve. This could be some. No, we wouldn't serve plan. food if it's going to be the tap. It's pickled eggs. Is that what it is? That's all it was. Pickled, pickled eggs, eggs and, and beer? Chips. No, you get whiskey, too. Really? Yeah. Whiskey, pickled whiskey. eggs, and yep. beer. Yep, mm. and swear a lot. And swear a lot. Wow, I like it already. Yep. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yep. Okay. So, but they tore that down, yes. and there was just a cellar that. hole was there for a, for a long, long time. time. Yeah. So Stu, who's another great Hopkinton guy. What's his uh, last name? Glassman. Okay. Yeah, he lives down on the lake. Yes. Um, so With Stu put together this this kazoo band, Sue. and Stu. Yeah. Yeah, and and. Um, so they're playing the kazoos, and they may or may not have had a, a beverage that was carbonated that wasn't soda. And uh -huh. so they would get, we got to the tap, and as we walked by, everyone finished their drink and <laughs> threw the can in the cellar hole and gave a salute. And oh, in honor we of in I line, one at a time. I love that. It was great. <laughs> I love that. Sounds like a good yeah. tradition, yeah. too. Yeah. Years ago, the, the parade used to be much bigger. And oh, they, yeah, they that's great. We were having the beer folks. Yep, yep. They just, they just had a big tractor trail and they put kegs on it. And they, they just hand out beers yep. to, to people along the line. And now it's yeah. water balloons. Do you remember so, the Cornell's float? Yeah. When, when Louis dressed up as a baby, he had a diaper on. <laughs> they put on a big diaper. Louis Monjart. They put a big diaper on him, and he sat in this playpen that they created. No way. And he had a huge bottle. He was drinking a bottle, but it was a Kahlua sombrero. <laughs> That's how Louis would drink. But he was sitting there getting ripped, drinking a Kahlua sombrero on this on the parade. That was. Oh my God. Yeah, good I knew there would be today. some good, some good memories. Yeah, we well, used to. Uh, Back long ago, we, the parade would would kind of follow the same route, and then would end up over on on Wood Street where Tommy's garage is now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I used to that used to be where we, we grew up before 495 came and took our house. Oh. So we had we had kind of fields over there and had would have uh, an after barber, barbecue after the uh, parade nice. over there when we were little kids. Yeah. So How much land is back there? All of it. <laughs> Except the part that was their house that got taken away. Yeah. So, but, so much is much there. acreage is there right now, currently? Is it near the Rod and Gun Club? I mean, the, the Sportsman Club? No, 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 it's, no right it's near, McIntyre right right Loomis. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm right on the other side of town. I'm thinking Lumber there. Street. Okay, Woods This Street, side Lumber of the bridge. Kind of the, the, the Islamic Church used to be uh, oh, okay. the Walnut Grove restaurant that my parents and uncles ran. Okay. And then what was Same it? building, or did they build? Was that when it was a strip club? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? And then oh, then she brought it up. Okay. Oh, that's what I heard. It and was then a strip club. It was. Yeah, it was. It, well, no, it was a. They place. had topless waitresses. Girls are that a strip club? Girls are Okay, so then, anyway, 
um, so is there, there's also. I told you we're going to, as soon as I saw him walk in, I, I told you we're going to go, off the rails. I wasn't allowed to go there. <laughs> Me neither. Not? I was <laughs> glad you went anyway. I stayed home. <laughs> Also, is a boat thing on Lake Mackinac? Your ratings go Mastodon. way up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody's yep. gone. Calling, please. Gonna, that's because they're laughing too hard. They can't talk. <laughs> they can't dial and laugh at yep. the same time. I did get I did get a text from somebody saying they love Margie's scarf. So <laughs> that is that's the one. It? You love Margie's scarf. Communication we have so far. <laughs> actually has a tie just like this or similar mm -hmm. and um and i had this also and i was just thinking is it was i don't know what i'm even saying anyway um <laughs> it's better on you than ken <laughs> well, thank you. i didn't want to say that yeah. thank you. so what so i was going to say was there is a boat a yep. boat parade launch thing yep. at lake maspinot which i used to live on for mm -hmm. five years um, was the first time i lived in hopkinton but there wasn't a, as i recall there wasn't a thing then it's 1986 to 91. No, that just so, happened in the last 10, 10 or so yeah. years. Last 10 yeah. years. Yeah. And it, so is that, um, is that uh, people that live on the lake, mm -hmm. um, Darlene Hayes was talking about it. Um, I know the Gedmans, I have to yeah. say, I saw this adorable picture. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they did, they did Martha Washington, George Washington. I think their son Mar um, was... Uh, Paul Revere holding mm -hmm. a lantern, yes, very and cute. then Morgan, their daughter, was um, Betsy Ross because she had the oh, nice. flag. Cool. Yeah, that's very yeah. sweet. I've but never they, been part of that parade. So have you? Have you seen that? Or I've, I've seen know. pictures and video yeah. of it. Yeah. So where do you I know where they a, where the boats go? Are they on the boats? They're or all they on the water. They're on the. <laughs> 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 This, this is going to be a spin-off show. This is my favorite the, show ever. The, the Dan just, and Brendan show is coming at midnight on Saturdays. Yeah, yeah, just wait. Jim will ask you. Jim will say, please do a show for us. Jim Howard's turn around. The Smothers Brothers, we now have the other brothers. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, so the brothers the boat, of other brothers. The boats are, the the boats are, are in the water. water. And, yeah, yeah, okay. But the I guess what I'm away. asking is yeah. where do the boats go in the water? Besides being in the water. Nowhere. They literally, they go around the perimeter of the closest houses, like by Oakhurst and that way. Oh, in that, in that, okay. In that neck of the woods, yeah. So on this side of Sandy Beach? Yes. Okay, in that, yeah. Yes. Okay. So a lot of people do go to Sandy Beach for a good visibility. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. They should go there every year after they go to the Hogwarts. Well, that was what I thought, because I didn't even know what time. So Harvard's was at what time? Noon. Noon So they're at two. Okay, good. So the Harvard's was sort of noon to one. Well, hopefully and next, year, on doing that if, next year, if people listen to what I said right. at the common, which more than likely they did not, I, I listened and wrote it down. If they did, <laughs> and now the, they heard it again. I would love to see the parade get bigger and go back to the days. It used to be neighborhoods like Elm Street. Yes. Uh, neighborhoods would put floats in or right. fire departments. I that. Or, so how do you do a float? Like on a car or on a pickup it's or a on just flatbed attached to a something pulling? Yeah, most of the trucking companies have low beds or yeah. flatbeds, and okay. And uh, if you call them, it, it, like Look at Larders, parade float. Larders used to always do it. I love it. Um, Barry Haynes always does it. I remember uh, Chamberlain Street. Uh, Chamberlain had a. I thought Chamberlain had a float. They did. And yep. I thought Spring Street. Spring. I forget what that's even called. I like to say by the street Spring. instead of the neighborhood name. Yeah, that's probably. Um, Spring so Street. Smith yeah. and Gibbons had. I thought they had a float. That's Springwood. Springwood. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, anyway. they could have. But you don't have and to have a big trail. You could, do a, you could do a pickup truck, like Whisper Way did a pickup truck. And I had a golf yeah, cart. Yeah, they hang signs. Did I really? did a golf cart by myself. It had a snowmobile engine in it. But, yeah, <laughs> so I would just so do funny. circles going around there. So you had how many floats total this year? How many do you know? I think they were 17 or 18. So let's let's say that we will plug it for next year. Yeah, for all, And then it. I will enlist my neighborhood to absolutely yeah. do a Huckleberry float. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Did, absolutely. Didn't we have the... Um, <laughs> Who are the guys in the little motorcycles? Shriners. Didn't we have them one year? I don't know. The 300th parade, they had a maybe lot of. The 300th. I, maybe yeah, that was. I don't it. think it was the horrible okay. parade. Okay. But I it it's oh, it's always been fun, and it used to be something you look forward to forever. Right. And you know, it's Planned never it's never quite Planned as long costume. as you'd like it to be, but mm -hmm. it you know the uh, the one thing I I don't know when this happened, but when I was growing up, people used to throw candy. Yeah. Now it's water balloons. Well, we threw candy. the candy goes we from the candy. trucks yeah. to the people watching, and and there were water balloons being thrown. So I I was thinking that 
Right, they used to just throw candy. And then I was thinking like trick or treat, if, if they don't throw the candy, you could squirt the people on the float. You can do but whatever then this you want. Year, There's no rules. It was water balloons and, and squirters on the trucks as well yep. as the candy. Yep. So we ha I know that I may or may not have a cousin that lives on the parade route. That is <laughs> obviously he does they, a family joke. They, on the they route. used to start like a week before, and they had hundreds and maybe thousands of water balloons and a group of 20 people at their house and just get you. And then, and then, it's funny. so one year, these cousins may or may not have frozen their water balloons, not so that they were ice, but so they were uncomfortably cold, oh. which I didn't and care because I was not in the parade. Oh. So yeah. I was down on Pleasant Street <laughs> and they got Tommy and those guys. And then the following year, Tommy has a water truck. <laughs> and what he did was he went and he filled the water truck, not just with water, but with pond water. <laughs> oh my and his God. daughter was driving it, and she came up to Pleasant Street by Grove, and instead, instead of taking the left onto Pleasant Street, she turned and turned on, hit the pump, and just got everybody with uh, nasty so that's pond like the water. area of the Pine residence, maybe, P-Y-N-E. That could be, or yeah. Terry. Mm -hmm, Terry. Yeah, you know, the, I think so. the Terry's. Could be the Terry's. Could yeah. be, I don't know, I mean, not, uh, it's not They're in that general There's area. a whole... Yeah. 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 There's so many. Every other street could have a cousin of yours. It could for six <laughs> generations. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, right? he's just as many generations. How many yeah. generations do you think, or do you know that you are know, one, two, in three, town? Four, five generations. Five or six. Yeah, something like that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I don't think legally we could date because we're probably related by some. <laughs> there's probably, Not there's any there's any there's probably an exception to that rule because I think when you're that many generations away, it's actually okay. It's okay. actually yeah. cousins. Less than that is okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we're both married, so it's <laughs> well. what our kids look like. <laughs> They may or may not have hair. That's right. Yeah, one would be bald, the other would be gray. And they'd probably be smiling. <laughs> they would be smiling. And giggling just like that. I yeah. love it. All right. So I think we actually are going to take a break. You're welcome okay. to stick around. We're going to talk about health care when you come back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll He's like, oh, yeah, I want to stick around for we'll that. We can, we can sure. talk about the, the health care Do you have something in your yeah. pocket? There's some gloves. There we go. <laughs> I know they were props. I'm, I'm going to get suiting up for my, uh... Okay, then. So we'll be right back. Right. We'll be back. This break brought to you by Dollar Saver. Hi, and we're yeah. back. And we're back. We lost Dan McIntyre, but hopefully he'll call in and give us some <laughs> questions or some emailed thoughts about some of our next topics. We're going to talk about the National Health Care Bill, which is not quite as fun, maybe, but we still have Brendan Tedstone, and we are joined by the lovely Ella Tedstone. Could you do me a big favor and either take off the hat or put it on backwards so we can see your beautiful face, which looks a lot like your beautiful mom? Thankfully. Yes. No, <laughs> well, no. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, I know Ella from school at Elmwood School. She's an excellent student and a good kid. 
So we're happy to have you here, Ella. Thank and you, Ella. And a Red Sox fan. Absolutely. I don't know. It was her birthday hat. last week. We took her to the Red Sox game. Oh, the first Red Sox game. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Aww. Happy birthday to you. Yay. Happy birthday, dear Ella. Last week at the Red Sox game. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Yay. You're doing great. Good okay. job. So, because you are not only head of the Board of Selectmen, are you the head? I am not. You're John the Catino. Okay, so you I am are an outstanding member. You are an outstanding, an outstanding member. You are all of those things. <laughs> I'm just a standing member. You are, you are just all of those things. Um, I forgot. You're right. It's John Catino. Yeah. Um, but someone called you the chairman of the Board of Selectmen that was yesterday. Danny. Okay, because that's what confused me. I thought, did they shift? If that did last switch? section didn't convince you that Danny's a confused I know, individual. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's a very creative thinker. He is. So I, I, it mixed me up. All right, of course, it's John Catino. But you are, you are a fabulous member of the Board of Selectmen and a, a good voice for the people. I try to be. Yes, and in your other life, you are a nurse. That's right. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because we're going to talk about the health care bill. Sure. Yeah, I'm a um, unit manager of the dementia unit at the Marianne Morse Nursing and Rehab in Natick. Mm -hmm. And uh, been there for about three years. And it's a wonderful place to live. We've had a lot of Hopkins and residents come in and out. And uh, it's a good thing. No, we want so them to come So can dementia be cured? Is that what you're no, saying? No, we have. So I, I just oh. started on the dementia unit about a month ago. But oh, okay. before that, I was the supervisor of the subacute. Oh, rehab, so oh. knees and hips and things like that. Oh, okay. So. I was confused. So, yeah. Mm. All right. Good. Yep. Yep. So, it's a great place to work. I love it. And, yeah. You know, people are nice. The patients are great. You know, I, had a, I worked at the prison as a nurse before, and so the, the patients are, it doesn't matter how unruly they are, they're nice compared to my last job. Nothing so like it's a, prison. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great place to work. Yeah. So, I work in the senior um, industry and at an assisted living, so a social and residential model compared to a medical model in a long-term care or subacute setting. And I would say that it do, healthcare has not really affected us yet. Okay. Um, we have a very small portion of our population that gets a state subsidy to help live in assisted living, but mm -hmm. it's like one yeah. person out of 45 residents. Right. Mm -hmm. So, however, there has been rumblings about how it will affect yeah. long-term care mm -hmm. and, and, and rehab, basically. Yep. So how, are they gonna cut rehab down? Have you heard anything from your perspective? Being So, so you're not just a nurse. I mean, a unit manager of an enormous amount of responsibility. We yep. know there's tons of people that go in and out of Mary Ann Morris. They're a huge not-for-profit yep. arm of Leonard Morris Hospital, That's right. correct? Yep. So, um, so in, from what you are aware of in your field, mm -hmm. what what do you think or what what do you see happening that will affect what it is that you do and how your residents are yeah. are there? So a lot of a lot of how our um, our patient makeup is there's a lot of it depends on like your insurance if you're Medicare if you're skilled if you're not skilled mm -hmm. and the the people that do the reimbursing there's so many codes on how to submit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything from giving a Tylenol to, you know, sending them out for a cancer treatment. There's, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many codes that you only have maximum allowables and, right. and, and a maximum per day. So, uh, like we sent somebody out the other day for a cancer treatment and it was a twenty thousand dollar cancer treatment. So, um, you know, they had before they came in for their knee or hip or whatever they whatever they had done, they already had that, that plan. But it's Medicaid Medicare, so that eight mostly you know the, the whole day's worth so that we ate that mm, you know right. um, mm -hmm. so there's there the state is a is a tough organization to to go against and mm -hmm. and their billing practices and and uh and everything it makes it very tough to uh to have a lucrative privately owned you know that there's a lot of these big corporations that come in and buy these places and That's they right. run them like businesses and not right. like um not like healthcare facilities you know and, and it's a it's a double-edged sword, you know. They they need to turn a profit, and they have CEOs that make tons of money. And and uh, and here, you know, I I put on this, you know, here we are, a little guy. We're in there trying to fight against those guys, and 
uh, mm. you know, it, it's it's a tough it's a tough thing. Um, Marianne Morris does have a phenomenal reputation for anybody who's watching. It is really, if I had to place a family member somewhere, I would love for it to be Marianne Morris. For dementia yep. care? Or for long-term or dementia. I'm okay. rehab. I'm less familiar with rehab side of it, but yeah. certainly for the long-term care and, and dementia mm -hmm. yeah. um, issues. I, I would just say that I know that. You know, it's met, you talk about Medicare, we don't know if even our generation will have mm, a, right. a subsidy to offset yep. that yep. kind of thing. So what will happen to entire generations yep. of people over 65 who need long-term assistance? Yep. I mean, that's, well, that's a scary thing for... And everyone's living so much longer now. You right. know, like our parents would generally, you know, the, the, the generation before them, that you know, if they lived in the 50s, they were doing good, and then 70s and 90s now, mm -hmm. and who knows how far it's going to go. Yeah. Yeah. Who's your oldest patient there? I think we have someone 103. 103. Yeah. Could you even imagine that? Right around and there. And it's probably not just one, but you probably have a handful of people over 100. We have, I don't know if we have a handful over 100, but we have probably 40% of our population is 90 plus. Which is amazing. It is. Which is amazing. It so is. in my neck of the woods, the average age for assisted living is 84, but the mm -hmm. people that yeah. we're bringing in lately are 94, 97. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, really, yeah. when you think about it, people, assisted livings look like what long-term care did right. 20 years yep. ago. Yep. So now you're getting people that are, are more, uh, the acuity is higher here in our neck of the woods, so we're bringing in more medical pieces, but still, it's, I don't know, I can't foresee it being a sustainable financial approach. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. When I was um, doing some research, there was a guy named Bob Bryan who re wrote, uh, writes for the Business Insider. And I guess the Kaiser Institute found that in under the, it's called the Better Care Reconciliation Act, is that it? Yeah, right. So the Affordable Care Act is the Obama, mm -hmm. and the other thing is the Better Care Re Reconciliation Act. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he said that um, premiums after tax credits would increase 74% compared mm -hmm. with Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act that older people could be charged up to 5% as much for premiums as younger people, it's three times now, that there's premium tax credit change under the Better Care, whatever it's called, Act, the new thing, for how much personal income is supposed to be spent. Uh, so anyway, it looks like it's more, um, and it's worse for lower income people, age 55 to 64, with the income above 200% of the poverty line would have a 96% increase from 399 to 782 a month. Under that 200% uh, poverty line, it would be a 294% jump from $69 now to 272. So I, and when you're on a I don't know income, how people are gonna, that is a significant seniors is. have a limit, you know, they have that mm -hmm. fixed income. And they're also trying to get rid of the, um, the Medicare pharmacy donut hole. Mm -hmm. So that is, I've been through that with my grandmother where she's had thousands of dollars of out-of-pocket expenses. Mm -hmm. Again, on just a social security and a surviving veterans pension benefit. Yeah. But that would be, I think, a phenomenal thing to do in terms of, I think pharmaceuticals are astronomical anyway, yeah. and I think that there, that's a whole conversation for a yeah. different show in terms of, yeah. of we'll do that. I really, price gouging. and. I really loved watching, I love Trey Gowdy. Mm -hmm. And I loved watching him on YouTube when he just deposed mm -hmm. and ripped that Scarelli. Uh, uh, who on, did the EpiPen? Uh, no, it was the um, cancer drug where he just yeah, 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 went yeah. up. Okay. It was like 5,000% five, five, five or some mm -hmm. crazy number like no. that. And he was just a smug people little need that punk. And Trey, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Trey Gowdy just ripped mm -hmm. him. But the kid didn't care. Um, mm -hmm. No. It was you know, pathologic but, almost. Well, yeah. <laughs> make but, a quick buck and not care about no yeah. empathy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah, he's in the wrong business. Well, maybe he's in the right business if he wants sure. to be a millionaire and have no heart, no soul, and he wants to gouge people, and, and if there's no regulations against it, maybe he's in the right business, but I, I couldn't do it. Um, no. <clears throat> you know, I think people that work in the healthcare business are, you know, I, I think that it's nice that we get paid to do it, but I don't think that the, the money is, is what draws people to the health right. You know, it's you like want to help people. Yeah, exactly. It's, no money. Help, it's who, service. No money, you want to help. It's true service. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I would say that just knowing the little bit of, I know about coding and reimbursement and, and those kind of things, that I cannot imagine a, a time where you're, as a nurse, you're not going to have to go through significant um, changes in how you care for a patient. <coughs> 
like yeah. It, yeah. It, with the regulations and it and just becomes a fight. I think there'll be heat from from yeah. the financial powers that be, even in a not for profit. Yeah. Right. to be able to make sure they still have to pay their bills at the end of the day. I don't care yeah, how big your no, endowment is. For like. sure. But I can tell you that in the three years that I've been at this place, there has been no change in the way that we care for the patient. We still are stagnant, and not stagnant, but we're still consistent on how we've done it from day one. Mm -hmm. And I think that you know, the whole concept of managed care is the doctors and, and everyone's going to get paid a little less, but they're going to funnel the patients to you. So I think that the, you know, I, I do think that our census is always relatively high. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a it's a very attractive place to go to, and I think right now we're still doing all right on that old concept where you know maybe we don't make as much money, but we do a little bit more volume. Mm -hmm. um, but at some point, I'm sure it will catch up, and and we'll have to do uh, have to amend our ways. But thankfully, you know, my job is to put band aids on people. I I don't I didn't go to business school. I went to nursing school, mm -hmm. and I don't uh, you know my paycheck cashes every two weeks. I like my work. Uh, I love my work, and I love being able to, to to come home, get a paycheck, and you know. Well, you've had a purpose at the end of a day. <coughs> yeah, yeah. The difference. And, and yeah. done done something yep. good in the world. Yep. Generally, there's you know there's always working in uh, geriatric care. There's always yes. sometimes there's, you know the down part is the end of life care. But right. even end of life care, like I had two patients pass away this weekend. <clears throat> wow. They were with it, and and you know the fact that you can just go sit there and. and just shoot the breeze with them as coherently as they as they can comprehend, and you you still make a difference. Absolutely. And, and maybe not so much for them, but to sit and, and talk with their families and right. and say, no, I you know I think you're doing the right thing by doing hospice, uh, okay. and it does it, it's nice you know it's nice to be able to to come home and uh, and kind of you know you're stressed at work for sure, but. You know, you know at, at the end of the day, you're doing the right thing. So let me ask Ella, since she's sitting here so quietly and patiently. Which never happens. What do you think about your dad being a nurse? What do you think about that? You, you, you know what he does? Your, you're talking to my Do you know what he does at work? What do you imagine he does at work? What do you think work? that I do at work? Does he, he puts on his nurses, he puts on that, what's that called? Scrubs. He puts on the scrubs, usually blue, I think I've seen him in. Right. Well, so I, got, puts on I the, got all kinds of colors. He puts on all, whatever it is. Matches my mood. Yeah. Okay. A lot of red. <laughs> Moody blues. <laughs> so he puts on the, the scrubs. He goes out the door. What do you imagine that he's doing during the day for his job? Yeah, she doesn't. She, she's not a talker like her dad. That's okay. So he goes and he t takes care of sick people, right? Yeah. And do you think he does a good job? Yeah. So what happens if you get a cut? Who helps you with your band-aid situation? Is it your mom or your dad? Dad. Yeah. And does he? What does he do? Like, if you had a cut here, what would dad do for that cut? Does he have a special routine? I know my First my son her laugh. my son was mad at me because I <coughs> told my kids I just called it boo boo cream, yep. you know, antibiotic cream, yep. and he went to the nurse at Elwood School and asked yep. for some boo boo cream. And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. so we came home and said, yep. Mom, it's not boo boo cream. Yep. Why do you call it that? He was yeah. mad at me because I didn't teach him how to yeah. swear either, but I'm not going to yeah. do that. So, so what is your dad's routine? He makes you laugh first so you're not crying if it's not, if something there hurts. And then what does he do? Put a Band-Aid on. Just Band-Aid? Clean it up a little bit maybe. Clean it. Well, does he clean it with that that Mercurochrome yellow goopy? No, I'm kidding. Good old Hopkin tap water. Soap and water. Yeah. <laughs> and then he puts the Band-Aid on. Do you guys have fun Band-Aids or plain Band-Aids? Mm. That's oh. nice. Do you have a preference of what kind? Do you want the SpongeBob Band-Aid or do you like just the plain one? I used to have like Barbie Band-Aids. Does it depend on your mood too? Like your dad has different <coughs> colors for his? No. <laughs> Which one do you like? Snoopy. Snoopy. Oh, I love Snoopy. <laughs> that is so sweet. Yeah, Snoopy Band-Aid. I knew it. Yep. So Snoopy Band-Aid and you get all cleaned up and you're laughing. Yes. And you feel much better, right? What was the worst bump or scrape or scratch you ever had? I know daddy what it was. Helped you. Let's see if you that daddy helped you with sprain ankle. Sprain ankle. No. That didn't, hurt a didn't lot. Somebody have to carry you in from the house to the house once. Glass. You stepped on glass. Oh, we stepped on glass. Oh. We were was building a shed, <laughs> and she was out in the woods barefoot, and she stepped on a piece of glass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it? So was it bleeding a lot? Mm -hmm. Was the glass still stuck in there? And but daddy helped you, right? We yeah. took care of it. No hospital. We saved on uh, medical costs right nice. there. Saved on our deductible stereo strips. So what do you want to be when you grow up? Do you know? You want to be like mom, huh? 
Yeah, you could be a lawyer. You'd be a good one. Yeah. But you have to talk when you're a lawyer. Yeah, I don't know. She must be taking a break because she doesn't shut it when I she's know. at home. <laughs> I know. I, I know her from school. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, thank you for, for sharing your thoughts and your, you know, I know it's a little scary. It's the first time you've been on TV. A little huh? scary, but you're going to do great. And we're going to get you on Character Matters, too. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do that later in the summer. All right. So what I heard, so my, my biggest concern about the health care thing is that the poor people and the old people won't be able to afford it, you know, and then... I don't know. It's hard to say because they don't turn people away. You know, like if maybe the, you know, like if you go to a, an emergency now, emergency room now on a, yeah. on a Friday night, you get people with the flu, you know, and unfortunately, oh. that's what's driving a lot of the health care up is... Okay. They don't have a primary care physician. They don't have health insurance, but the hospitals can't turn you away. Okay. So they'll go in and say, you know, I have the flu, so they'll give them, you know, whatever. So they take There's the time to, to tell take them to drink care. water. There's nothing you can do for the flu. But yeah. so I feel like we were one of the first states, if not the first state, to require everybody to have health insurance because hospitals were right. losing so much money with um, unpaid medical bills, and so I was that the Romney. Care? I don't remember who it was, but it was it was somebody who, uh, a politician obviously, who required that we have that. And then now that we have health insurance for everybody, you don't always have a primary care doctor, right. so they're still going to the hospital. Yeah. Um, I'm very happy that more urgent care places are popping mm. up. I actually oh, yes. think that that's a Tri much... Valley Urgent Care is wonderful. I've been there as well. They're, they're they've great. been incredible. Yes. And it was an ER doc from Milford who yeah. who is running it over there. and. I've had a great experience with that. So always, I'm a big Milford Regional girl anyway. Yep. I'm, I have a big shout out to local hospitals. Absolutely. And um, I feel like that we have to find a better model because I know that my deductible, which is relatively high, it's $2,500, not been the highest deductible I've ever had, but because I have some arthralgias and things that I deal with on a chronic basis, that sometimes I think about, and I work, my yeah. husband works, we have savings, I think about, I don't right. really want to pay the copay, the deductible. Food or so this office visit is going to cost me yeah, $800 because yeah. it's or a special. So or I think of that as a dual income working mm -hmm. middle class family in America yep. mm -hmm. who can pay a high copay right now. Yeah. But what does it do for the people that, that the are, mm -hmm. you know, or just can't yeah. get sick? That's, that's really, I, I hate that it changes the way we seek help. Yep. And healthcare, and then in Europe, it's universal healthcare or some yeah, places, Sweden or I have but no idea. Canada too. Canada is socialized medicine. I played hockey up in Canada, and stinks. You and never wanted to get sick in Canada. Right? Oh, no, okay. You, oh, okay. You wait. Those people up there, oh. they wait six, eight months for an MRI. Oh, well, that's because it's socialized work. and they, so they right. triage every. So when you grow up, you can fix this, okay? All right. Yes. <laughs> I know that um, Mitch McConnell, who's trying to get this through the Senate, Senate Majority mm -hmm. Leader, I think. Um, Susan Collins already said she doesn't agree, yeah. and um, Paul, uh, somebody else, um, it's a Kentucky senator. Um, so there are two senators, Kentucky Rep Republican Rand Paul, they don't agree. So because of them pulling out, they can't get it through. And there are seven other senators who were yeah. on the fence before they took the break for 4th of July. Yeah. So any of those drop and it's dead in the yeah. water. So I, it would seem <laughs> to me that it doesn't work on many levels, and I, I'm really hoping that they. I think it's a broken out. system, and we have yeah. to figure. Oh, it's we a do horrible have to, system. We have but to figure I, it out. I don't know. I mean, I, you probably don't want to get into politics, but I, I'm sure, a firm believer of. And then we want people to I, call in. I don't like the parties. I don't like Democrats. I don't like Republicans. I, I think agree. everybody should just be a. And you know, vote, vote, vote for what you think mm -hmm. is, is right and wrong, and, and right. uh, I mean, this last election, it shows you. Right. I mean, regardless. You know, I, of your I, there are people that have accused me of certain things in in, uh, in never. politics. How could they ever? I know do that? it's hard to believe no, anyone ever. would take right. a pot They're shot wrong. at you, but um, you know it's hard to believe that these two knuckleheads that we had running for president were the uh, the best two that the United States they of America weren't. could put up. I know they, they weren't, weren't and that was the shame. Was well, in my humble opinion, there wasn't it. a good choice. That's everybody's opinion, and you know. Yeah. I support Trump. He's our president, and I will support him. And I supported Obama, whether I liked him or not. I supported him, and, and um, but 
you know, it's, it's a sad state that, that this is where we're at right now, yeah. you know? Well, especially, and this is a whole other conversation, in view of North Korea rattling its sabers yeah. in its ICBM missiles, and yeah, then... Yeah, they're like a little ankle biter dog, though. May, like, if yeah, push came right. to shove, the U.S. <laughs> is just going to step on That's them. That's true. And I'm, I but know I, that <clears throat> Trump yeah. is not afraid to push that button to, to step on, you know? True. And, uh, That's true. I'd much rather have... In, on those type of issues, I'd much rather have Trump there than most and of the other people. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, whereas, because you think of his fortitude, or he's just going to do it well, instead I think of talking about it. He's full of bravado, and, and he's not going to let anybody step on us. He's going to yeah. say, "Look what happens when you do this," and let this be a lesson to you. Mm -hmm. um, That's true. But I don't want to get into that. I'm going to get no, ten thousand. No, I don't want to. Okay, it, it, fine. It's going to have 10,000 emails and phone Another calls. And yes, and please call us at 508-435-7880 if you'd like to have an opinion on anything we're saying or add anything to our conversation because we are a community conversation. That's what we yeah. like to do on the show. Uh, so the last thing, I think we're not going to go to a break because we only have a couple minutes. Yeah. But what I'd love to know is, Ella, can you show me that fidget that you have? I know you brought a fidget in. So can you tell me tell me a little, because I know this is a really popular thing. Can you hold this up? That camera's on. It's got the red, light. the red light. So this is a fidget, and I've seen them at CVS for $9.99. I know Job Lot has them for like $2.99. And a lot of the kids at school had them toward in the spring. They kind of appeared. Last year was Rubik's Cubes everywhere, mm -hmm. and those. bottle flipping was in the fall. Well, we've done that. And yes, and now it's... It's these. So tell me, show me what that does so the, t the camera can see. All right, so it spins and you watch it, right? So that is the prettiest fidget yeah, I ever it's did a rainbow. see. I have she boys just and got they don't that. have nice ones. She just got that this week at Bar Harbor. Her birthday? Oh, wow. And it's, yeah. she, uh, I tightened it all up. So it's, oh, that's right, it's my phone. Okay. So this is, apparently you can take it apart and create all different designs with it. And, uh -huh. You mean um, you can change the, where the color yeah, rings are? Yeah, so those come out oh. and you can put different things in it. Oh boy. So it's, it's part of her so birthday present. Oh, nice. She loves it. It's nice. That's lovely. I do like that. I, I want to thank you for coming on. I mean, you take oh, time away you. from being with your yeah, family, this is fun. half your family. So the whole reason I got involved in politics is to, to kind of promote Hopkinton. And, and, you know, and I like the, uh, as a selectman, I, I like being able to maybe make some decisions that might make it so. This girl and my son can stay in Hopkinton and be a seventh, eighth, ninth generation. Oh yeah. Um, you know, and I know the town's evolving, and we do what we can to keep it a small town. Mm -hmm. But we'll, uh, you know, we try to do our best to. And these are the reasons that you do it to, to have these guys. Don't we all? On. Don't yep. we all as parents say that? Yep. So I want to thank um, Brendan Tedstone, our selectman, yep. for coming here tonight. We'll see you next and week. And Dan McIntyre and Ella Tedstone too. Don't thank Dan; it'll go to his head. That's okay. <laughs> thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time. Thanks.